Do you want to know the best way to level up your trading companies in Sea of Thieves? Maybe you're curious what voyages or world events are the best for each of the trading companies? Well, my pirate friend, this video is for you. Hey there, I'm HippoTC, your pirate guide. If you like this content, give it a hearty like, drop a comment, and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to join me on my Twitch adventures schedule in the description below. Now let's sail into the heart of this video. In Season 11, Sea of Thieves got a major update with a new quest table and higher reputation levels for trading companies. For a deep dive into the quest table, check out my breakdown video in the description. Before I go any further, I do want to say in this video, I focus not necessarily on the absolute best way to min-max any particular thing, but my goal is to explain to you how it all works and some key differences that will benefit you when leveling your companies. The best thing about Season 11 is that you can control your voyage and the direction you want to go. Remember to have fun and don't get too lost in the grind. This is a pirate game after all. Now let's talk about the best ways to level up your trading companies, especially if you're a lone pirate. Although these strategies work for crews too, I'm speaking to my solo sailors out there. Before we plunge into the company specifics, let's address the emissary flag mystery. If you're scratching your head about what that is, fear not, I got an older video that will explain any relevant information that you need and will guide you through it. Emissaries, my mateys, are your ticket to bonus value on your loot. By representing a trading company through the emissary table, you get a bonus on loot turned into them. The higher the grade, the bigger the bonus. Grade one, you get base emissary on all loot turned in. Grade two is 33%. Grade three is 66%. Grade 4 is 100% emissary value, and Grade 5 is 150% on the loot sold. The sweet spot is Grade 5 for maximum profit. Now let's tackle the age-old question. How do you achieve that, especially as a solo player, drawing unwanted attention with that emissary flag? That's a great question. But before we delve into that answer and the trading companies, let's talk about emergent encounters briefly. Shipwrecks, skeleton captains, megs, skelly ships, and messages in the bottles. These treasures are worth chasing to reach grade five. If you find those bottles, don't just look at them, do them. They are insanely valuable. Your session's goal, get your chosen trading company to grade five, grab the emissary voyage, complete it, rinse and repeat unless you're a merchant, which I'll get to in a little bit. Now, onto the trading companies. First up, gold hoarders. Ah, the joy of X marks the spot. The regular voyages take you to islands, and those islands might hide messages in a bottle. The real treasures of the Sea of Thieves. My tip, kickstart your gold hoarder emissary with a raid voyage of the Skelly Fleet. Reach level three, boat down buried treasure voyages, and hit grade five before reaching the outpost. Once there, pick up your emissary voyage. Now the real kicker, stacking PVE quests per island using the new quest table. Picture this, I was sailing with my friend Green. We voted down extra X-Berry maps for islands that already had our emissary digs, racking in more treasure per island. By voting down captain voyages for the big islands and sailor voyages for the smaller islands, we maximized our treasure. It worked well as long as the closest island was the one we desired. In the end, using this method, we netted around 250k in total value, and that, my friends, is pirate math for success. Ah, order of souls. Season 11 breathed new life into this. Raid voyages, especially Ashen Winds and Skeleton Forts, shower huge rewards for your spooky endeavors. Low risk raid voyages mean better profit for Order of Souls, and thanks to bonus skulls for captains and skeleton lore defeats. When you do a raid voyage for an Ashen Winds, for example, you are guaranteed the Ashen Winds skull, which nets you around 10,000 in value, including the bronze level trinket that you'll get for completing it at 5k. With all the other skulls, you're looking at a very easy way to get yourself some Order of Souls rep. Another raid voyage that isn't too bad for Order of Souls is the Skelly Fort, as it tends to be a little bit less on the risk factor than other world events and is still fairly easy to do. This one also gives you extra skulls from the Skeleton Lords and the Ashen Guardian Skeletons. 
In my test, I try to stack the PVE islands on the emissary for order souls, but it doesn't quite work the same way as the gold hoarders, but you can still kind of use this method to fill in any of the extra islands along your emissary path to get as many skulls as possible. I will say though, you always want to make sure you're keeping an eye for any skeleton captains that you might find that are the emergent captains on islands, as they will drop some very good skulls for you as an order of souls. So keep an eye out for them. I must confess, I am not a merchant at heart, and there is already a great video out there by Fuzzy Bond who has an incredible breakdown on the best merchant routes, so make sure to check that out. However, here's a gem for you. A ghost fleet raid voyage. Destroy all of the ships, including the ones next to the captains, and watch the ghostly storage crates drop 1k gold per each crate, which at grade 5, which roughly gives you 2500k per storage crate. One round of this event guarantees you grade 5 for the merchants, which ends up being a lot of treasure for you, especially considering the fact that you're going to get that gold tier level 15k trinket for the merchants. I will say though, from my test, some of the easiest leveling for merchants is to do a raid voyage for a treasury. As a merchant, you will get three diamond crates that average around 3,000 gold per crate before emissary bonus and some additional loot as well, meaning you can just stack these treasuries over and over again for easy merchant rep that you don't have to worry about feeding. I'm looking at you, Hammy. I will say at this time, the emissary voyage for merchants is pretty terrible and not really worth doing. So if I were you, I wouldn't bother too much with them. If you happen to find a bottle quest for merchants though, make sure to do that as they are very worth it if you are a merchant emissary. Athena, the end game trading company, is a marathon, not a sprint. Emergent loot won't cut it, so focus on Athena specific voyages like Legends of the Veil vale or Raid voyages, especially the Skelly Fleet. Legends of the Veil vale guarantee grade 5 and is probably the easiest route. Raid voyages break the monotony, and for Athena, the Skelly Fleet is the most lucrative. It's easy to do and gets you some pretty decent loot for 5 to 10 minutes of work. And as a bonus, if you complete the Skelly Fleet, there's a chance that a Fort of Fortune will spawn. And as far as Athena is concerned, the Fort of Fortune is very lucrative and worth doing if you're trying to get a rep. Now, last but not least is Reapers. Now, Reapers don't have any voyages that you can do, so you can kind of pick whatever trading company that you want to do. But here's the deal when it comes to Reapers. Reapers level five will showcase all of the other emissaries on the server, meaning Reapers hunts are going to be your best bet. But if you're not really a PVP savvy kind of pirate and you still want to get your Reaper up, do any of the raid voyages for any of the companies that you so desire. My recommendation would probably be gold hoarder voyages as those are easier to do and it makes it a little bit easier for you to turn those in over at Reapers. That being said, Reapers now can hop from server to server using tall tail dives and raid voyages. So definitely be on the lookout for that. To wrap it up, the key to success lies in controlling your voyages. If your emissary server gets too spicy, use a raid voyage or a tall tail dive to switch servers and find something a little bit less intense. And remember, when doing emissary voyages, stick to the shores of plenty for better visibility. If things get dicey, refer to my PvP tips and tricks video to defend yourself like a true pirate. So how did I do? Do you agree with what I shared? Let me know in the comments below and may fair winds guide you on your Sea of Thieves adventures.